Okay, so today we're solving systems by elimination. Okay, um, we're going to use this method when we don't want to graph. Okay, we also tend to use this method when both equations are in standard form. All right, so let's take a look at this first example. All right, so I look at this equation. I don't really want to graph this because it's in standard form like for the most part, I know this is negative, but it's pretty close to standard form. So if I were going to cover up and find the intercepts, I think that it would kind of be a pain because none of these numbers go into 23 evenly and 6 does not go into 15 evenly, right? So if I try to do the cover and solve thing, it's not really working out very nice, is it? Okay. Now, if I think about using substitution, I like to use substitution when I have one of the equations y equals and then all the, the rest of the equation, right? Or x equals and then all the rest of the equation. This one, it's not like that. So I'm going to show you guys this other method, which is called elimination, okay? In elimination, what we do is we divide the equations into columns. A column for my x's, a column for my y's, and a column for my regular numbers. Then what I do within those columns is I add the two equations together. So I add together what I have in this column, I add together what I have here, and I add together what I have here. Now when I say add, you still have to use your integer rules, okay? Because what's negative 3 plus 3? Yeah. 0, right? So you still have to think about what your integer rules are. So this is 0, so I'm not going to write anything here. Okay, what is negative 2 and positive 6 when I put them together? Positive 4. Positive 4. Okay, and then what is negative 23 and 15? That's negative 8. Okay, now I'm going to drop down my equal sign. Okay, and so now what I have here is I have an equation with only one variable. And this is pretty easy to solve. How do I solve this? Yeah, divide by 4, okay? Now that I've divided by 4, I can get the value of y. y is negative 2. Okay, so now what do I do with that negative 2? Yeah, I plug it into one of these original ones in the y spot. Now, does it matter which one I plug it into? I'm going to plug it into the one that looks easier to work with because it does not matter which one. I think the bottom one looks easier because this one has a bunch of negatives. So I'm going to go with the bottom, okay? So I'm going to plug it in 3x plus 6 times negative 2 is going in that spot for y equals 15. All right, now all I have to do is I have to solve this equation for x and then I have my ordered pair, okay? So here's what I get. 3x minus 12 equals 15. Now, what am I going to do to isolate x here? Add 12 to the side. Yeah, add 12 to both sides. And then after that, what am I going to do? You're going to divide by 3. Yeah, divide by 3, right? So what is 27 divided by 3? 9? Okay. 
So I get x equals 9. So now I have enough information to write down my ordered pairs. So let's write down my answer is the ordered pair. What number goes first? 9, because that's the x, and then negative 2 is the y value. Okay? All right. So let's take a look at another example. Do you guys need more time catching up there? Okay, here's your second example. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take this one, and we're going to draw our columns. Okay, so a column for our x's, a column for our y's, and a column for our regular numbers, right? We're going to add the columns together. So what's negative 7 and positive 3 when I put those together? Negative 4, and there's an x with that, right? Okay, what happens with negative 2y and positive 2y? Yeah, these cancel each other out. They make nothing, right? Zero. Okay, so I'm going to leave nothing here. Now, drop down the equal sign. What's left when I put these two together? Negative 12. Okay, so this is kind of spread out. I'm just going to rewrite it really quickly so you guys can see that it's an equation, right, that I can now solve for x. So how do I solve this equation for x? Yeah, divide by negative 4. Very good. Okay, so what is negative 12 divided by negative 4? Negative or positive 3? Positive. Okay. All right, now, after I get that first value for one of my variables, I'm going to take it and plug it back in. Now, does it matter which one I plug it into? No. So let's plug it into which one? I like the bottom better. It looks easier to work with. Okay, so 3... This is going in the x spot since I just solved for x, right? So 3 times 3 plus 2y equals 3. Okay, so solve it now. Okay, so we'll subtract 9 from both sides. And this gives me a negative 6, right? And then last, divide by 2. So what do you get for your value of y? What kind of 3? Okay, so now let's write our answer. Our answer is the ordered pair x first, then y. 3 comma negative 3. All right. Does that make sense on that one, how we got that one? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Is this easy so far? Okay, yeah. now, look at this next one. If I add negative 3 and negative 3, what do I get? Negative 6. Negative 6. <laughs> okay, like, I, wanna, I want it to make 0, but it's not actually making 0, is it? Okay, and then these two, 3y and 6y, that's not making 0 either. So what would happen if this one was a positive? Would these then make 0, yeah. these x's? Yeah, so I can make this a positive by doing the same thing to both sides of the equation here. I can either divide all the parts by negative 1 or I can multiply them all by negative 1. 
Either way, that's going to make this negative 3 change sign, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to multiply or divide, it doesn't matter, all the parts by negative 1. Now when I do that, I'm going to rewrite both of these over here so I don't get mixed up. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the top one just the way it was. Negative 3x plus 3y equals negative 6. And I'm going to rewrite the bottom one after I've changed the sign by multiplying or dividing by a negative. So negative times a negative, positive. Negative times a positive, negative. Negative times a positive, negative. And now I'm going to do my columns on this one. Does that make sense, what we did there? Okay, so let's go ahead and do your columns, and let's see what we get here. So now, does one of them cancel or eliminate? These x's, right? These make 0. What's 3 and negative 6? Negative 3y. And what's negative 6 and negative 6? Negative 12. Okay, right? Same sign, add them, keep their sign. Okay, so now what am I going to divide by? Negative 3. Okay. And then we get y equals positive 4. Now, what am I going to do with this positive 4? Plug it in. Now, it doesn't matter if I plug it in here, I plug it in here, or I plug it in here. I can use any of these equations. Remember, this one is equivalent to this one. So I can plug it into either. So which one do you guys want to use? The new bottom one. That one looks easy to work with, right? So I'm going to use the new bottom equation, 3x minus 6 times y. What am I putting in the y spot? 4 <coughs> equals negative 6. Okay, so now let's solve that. So we get 3x minus 24 equals negative 6. What am I going to do next here? Add. Okay, so we get 3x equals 18, and last step would be doing what? Divide. So what do we get for my value of x? Yeah, x is equal to 6, right? Okay, so what's your ordered pair for your answer here? 6, 6 comma 4. Okay, does anyone need more time catching up on that one? Okay, can I turn the page? All right, if you guys are ready, turn your page. Okay, so this is our last one. And this one's slightly different than the ones before. Not in the way that we solve it, but in what happens when we start solving. Okay. All right, so go ahead and write that one down. Okay, is anything here going to cancel when I start adding? Yeah. X plus X, what's that? Oh, one. one plus one makes what? Two. Two. That's not going to cancel. Negative seven and negative seven, are those going to cancel? No, that makes negative 14, right? So do I need to multiply one of these rows by a negative? Yes. Yeah, let's multiply the bottom by a negative 1, and then we're going to do our rewrite. Okay, so we get x minus 7y equals 6. Then we get negative x plus 7y equals negative 1, because everything here is changing signs, right? Now, do your columns. Okay, 
Do the X's eliminate now? What about the Y's? Did everything on this side eliminate? Okay, so what's really left on that side? Nothing. What's the number for nothing? Zero. Put a zero there. Bring down the equals. What's six minus one? Is this true? No. So what is our solution? Yeah, no solution. Okay. What would happen if I got zero equals zero? What would that mean? That would mean infinite solutions, right? Okay. But if you get something that's not true, that means no solution. Okay. What I'm going to put up right now, I want you to take a picture. This is your homework. There's the top. This is the top half of the page. So take a picture right now. Okay, and then I'll move it so you guys can take a picture of the bottom. You're doing all the problems. It's also going to be posted on School Loop. Okay? So there's the top. All right, are you guys ready for the bottom? If you cannot get on School Loop and you don't have a camera phone, you need to see me for a hard copy. Okay? All right, here's the bottom. All. Do them all. Okay. All right. 